A few years back, I began to hear about the last Reformation. Dr. Brown, you're familiar with the last Reformation. Have you seen the video? I began to hear the name Torben Sundergaard and all this controversy surrounding this movement. He's based in, in Denmark. And is it God? What's happening? And it was basically one of these back to the Bible movements. It was saying, hey, look, Jesus gave us a commission to go out and heal the sick and set the captives free, to make disciples, to baptize them. And, and Torben was seeking to live this out on the streets and seeing amazing fruit. And as a result of that, there was some real opposition in, in Denmark and attacks on him. And ultimately, he came to the States uh, with the goal to, to have religious asylum here, to be able to freely practice his faith and for his children to freely live out their faith. And we'll, we'll talk about the situation in, in Denmark in, in a little while. Uh, but what what happened was that he got he got arrested and uh yeah i I was trying to explain to my wife what happened because i was going to testify on his behalf in court why in the world did he get arrested for why is he still in prison what's going on so we are trying to make this work with torben through his wife setting up a three-way to to get him on uh torben are you there sir yes ah okay all right you are calling us from prison right now. Yeah, I'm calling for myself. How how okay, long how long have you been in prison? Uh, one hundred and ninety five days on for now. That is a little more than a half year. Oh my. And and why were you arrested in the first place? To be honest, it's, it's, I, I'm shocked. I, I'm very surprised that something like that can happen in America. And to be honest, I actually don't know. Uh, and I still don't know today because the first thing I was heard was that they had heard that I was smuggling weapons. But that falls to the ground, right? Right. So I remember hearing you, you, you were... just don't make any sense. Yeah, friends, this this is actually happening in America. This is not something we're making up. I, I testified in court. I, I saw Torben in, in the prison outfit and brought in there handcuffed. I mean, it, it's shocking. Whatever is going on, whatever prompted it, so someone said smuggling weapons. So they, right, the gospel preachers smuggling, smuggling weapons from Mexico, whatever it was. Of course, that that disappears. But still being held. So Torben, to this day, are you saying that formal charges have not been brought against you? Yes, there's no charges, nothing. And 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 what I don't understand is why why can somebody not just sit us down, put the paper on the table, and say, okay, have Torben done anything he has been accused of, then put charges again against him? But but. We have there's nothing, and I have not done anything criminal, and 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 I'm still here, 195 days celebrating my birthday, celebrating my anniversary, New Year, Christmas, away from my family. I've been married with my wife been seven years. I've done ministry full time over 20 years, and I've never done anything criminal, and I have no idea how long time we will go still. That is the thing. Like when I came in first, they put me in handcuffs off the wall, chains around my leg, handcuffs on my head, and then they put me in first time ten days in isolation, and then later I was put into a dorm with people who have been in prison for twenty and thirty years. One of my roommates, he had murdered somebody. Uh, another guy, he had stabbed his uh, boss in the back with a knife. What have I done? Uh, I've been preaching the gospel. The day before I got arrested, I baptized 10 people and prayed for people and shared Jesus. And so it has been very unreal. And, and I think that is the biggest, the whole surprise around it. And, and don't understand why it's not on every news uh, media outlet out there and why, why nothing is happening. Because this is what I feel like sometimes when I'm here. My family feel like that. We have to, I don't understand. I truly don't understand. And, and you know, uh, let me speak to everybody plainly. You might say, well, I, I, I disagree with Torben's doctrine, or I don't, I don't think that God heals like this today or whatever. I don't believe in deliverance. Fine. You can have your differences. <laughs> the idea that someone is in jail and he's given himself to preaching the gospel. I, I've got good friends, grads from our ministry school, have worked with Torben 
on the front lines, people getting healed, getting set free from demons, above all, being led to Jesus, being baptized in water. And that's what you were going about doing. That's what you were doing in America. In fact, that's where you were in America because of the the persecution and the hostility in Denmark. You know, Den- Denmark, uh, uh, a country of, of what, uh, five, six million people, but there are maybe 5,000 or less Charismatics Pentecostals. It's, it's a tiny, tiny minority. And among those, those actually living it out, it's even a smaller number. So friends, this I, I'm doing my best to shout this to the world. This is massively unjust. And again, we're going to bring on attorney Michelle Sanchez in a moment to, to give us more legal background. Torben, how has God used you in prison? Because this is where you are right now. And, and he has not answered prayer to get you out. What's been happening in prison? Yeah, I'll say the first month and two, I I was almost the first, to be honest. Uh, I say I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I also fasted, but I, I really felt depressed. But then a very strong dream for somebody, and, and God really started to speak to me about uh, taking responsibility for my time here and, and don't waste my time and really try to to get the best out of it. Um, so I, I've been reading the Bible, of course, a lot. I've been praying a lot. Uh, I've read the whole Bible and, and this. But then God starts to move. Um, after two months here, uh, people start to get dreams uh, and repent. Like like uh, there was one guy who came to my cell one day. He had got the same dream three nights that and three times that night, and he repented, and he got born again, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, another guy, he got a dream uh, of an evil snake coming to him, and he took a stone and threw after the snake, destroyed the head of the snake. He called his wife. He got the same dream the same night outside, wow. and I could use that to preach the gospel, and he got baptized and born again, and, and, and then... Uh, Things start to happen, and people start to get healed. We saw people set free. Um, on our baptized five people in water. Uh, of course, we, we believe in immersion, but uh, I don't have that here. So right. that is a cup of water over the head, and then they go in and take a shower afterwards. But and many more have been healed and, and really met God. Um, and one time we, uh, I did teaching every day, and we started uh, three Bible discovery, uh, three Bible uh, groups. Uh, where people are doing Bible studies. Um, and, and the challenge is that it's in Spanish. I'm the only one who don't speak Spanish. So try to imagine that also I've been with people for half a year where I'm the only one who don't speak Spanish. Amazing. So the TV is in Spanish. Uh, when they play cards outside, they're in Spanish. So it's only two, three people I can communicate with. And and they have met God and been my translator for Many people have left now. Most people have left. I'm actually the one in this apartment where I am now. We've been here longest. Um, so mo- many people have left. So the atmosphere changed a little. New people come in, and some people have also gone against it. So now uh, we, we had three Bible stories. We had at one, one time 18 people out of 25 who was doing Bible study every day. Many lives got changed, but now we only have one Bible study left. And the new people come in were not so interesting. But I've learned a lot. I want to say it has been the hardest thing I've ever experienced, but it has been beautiful in some areas. Uh, when I read the Bible now, uh, teach the word about even with lie or kind of evil and we be arrested. It makes sense when I see how Paul, he wrote seven of the letters from prison and, and, and the persecution they experienced in the book of Acts. It's very often jealousy. Paul came up late, he was preaching gospel. Many people received and some people received and then some people became jealous and they started to spread a lot of lies. And, and so, so I learned a lot. I would say in some areas, I'm thankful I was not. I would have come out very depressed and very down and very fearful and said to everyone, be careful, don't go to jail. But but now, after half a year, it is the hardest I've ever tried. But I want to say to everyone, be bold out there, preach the gospel. Don't be afraid. Like, like God is in control. He is working through this. And, and, and I spend so many hours every day just in prayer and reading the word. And, and, and I just want to say 
gospel. Yeah, and Torben, uh, from the heart, I truly believe that everything Satan or the world mean for evil, God will turn for good. And just like John Bunyan would not have produced some of the works he produced if he was not in prison, and, and the letters of Paul from prison that we read to this day, I truly believe that just what God's doing in your own heart, this time, all the time alone with him that you never could have had in the midst of ministry and family, as hard as it's been, especially separate from your family, I truly believe that the prayer that comes out of this will be used for good. That being said, uh, when we come back on in a moment with Michelle Sanchez, uh, we want to talk about practical things that folks can do, but I want everyone that's listening, that's watching, pray for Torben and his family. Pray for justice. Pray for God's best. Pray that everything that was meant to hurt the gospel will instead advance the gospel. As an American, I'm ashamed that this is happening on our, in our country, but by God's grace, we're going to see it through. Go ahead. Last word to you, Torben. Can I say the last thing? Yeah. Uh, when, when I left Denmark, I was in shock. I, I can I never imagine that I should experience what I experienced in Denmark. And and I was sitting in the airport on the way to America, and I was like, God, I, how can this happen? I've been so proud of being Danish, and suddenly the government come after me. And then God said, Tom, I brought you to America to make my people ready for what is coming, because mm. producers are also coming to America. And, and now he experienced it like, Amazing. And, and, yeah, hey, I, I'm sorry. I'm just going to jump in. We're out of time here in this segment. We're going to come back with Michelle. But hear this word from Torben. This is preparation for what is coming. God bless you, my brother. You are not alone. We're joined now by attorney Michelle Sanchez. Thanks for holding and being with us today, Michelle. I appreciate it. Pleasure, Dr. Brown. It's not nice to speak with you today. Yes. Yeah, so, so Michelle, is there something we're not being told? Is there something we're missing? Is is there more to the story? Because it it seems outrageous. Well, actually, there is a lot that needs to be clarified in this story. There's a lot of discrepancies that have been caused by public commentary, the incorrect public commentary. So, I would like to set some things very straight and very clear before we even discuss anything else. Please. First of all, his asylum application was timely filed, and the judge ascertained this in court. The judge also determined that he was 100% credible, that Torben was 100% credible in his testimony. The judge never said anything that could lead anyone to believe that Torben was inventing a claim. With asylum law, there's something very specific, which is called a frivolous application for asylum. If the judge determines that the application is frivolous, that the testimony is uh, tainted by, by fraud or embellishment, the judge could deem the application frivolous, and that would bar the individual from applying for any other immigration benefit in the future. But in this case, Torben was determined to be 100% credible. The judge determined that he didn't show any persecution in the past, but that's besides the point. All the persecution that he fears is subjectively and objectively grounded, and that was what we had to establish. The judge said, yes, subjective, you got it. You fear persecution. I see that in your testimony. But the objective component is what the judge said was non-existent, and that is uh, very simple. Any person in Torben's shoes would fear persecution should that person had to return to Denmark. I would say, Dr. Brown, that if a law were passed on the parliament floor and there was a politician speaking about a documentary named God's Best Children and the preacher who was performing the deliverances was doing uh, these things on, on different people and that that was something that could be very uh, dangerous to children to view because it could cause them PTSD or it could make them very scared. And the only preacher 
who performed these deliverances on God's best children is Torben, I would say that the only person who that politician was referring to was Torben Sundergaard. And, and, so, and let me just jump in. So, friends, this is not a hypothetical. In other words, you do have a politician in Denmark. You do have legislation being discussed very specifically that would ban the, the practice of deliverance, which is a very biblical New Testament practice that would ban the practice of deliverance, let's say, with children pr present or there would be consequences for performing whatever. Th this is not hypothetical. This is something actually happening. And, and Torben's own children have been interviewed and and thoroughly investigated you know, what's going on, how are they being affected. So we, th we thought there was a very strong case to say he has already experienced religious persecution in Denmark and has every reason to fear that there would be consequences from practicing his faith or his children potentially taken away. Now you're saying this is actually something being talked about in legislation in Denmark, correct? Yes, it, it's being spoken about specifically in Denmark and that legislation was passed, and we presented the translation of that politician's words on the parliament floor, where the politician referred to the preacher, who is Torben, and the documentary God's Best Children. And we also presented the law itself and the translation. So how could there be any room for further judgment than that of seeing that this gentleman, Torben Sundergaard, fears persecution on account of his religion should he return to Denmark. And the other thing that the, that the judge said was that this law was a law of general application. That means that if, if you run a red light, then you get a traffic ticket. Anybody could run a red light and get a traffic ticket. That's a law of general application. This law, this Section 243 in Denmark, applies to him. It, yeah. was, it was authored with in mind. It's, it's something that, that was done that was done specifically to punish him. And I think that the judge, with all due respect to the Immigration Court and the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security, all the, the people involved in this hearing, with all due respect, I don't think that it would be a good idea for an immigration judge in his position to open up the floodgates to litigation and all of a sudden say, okay, Christians who are persecuted in this way in Nordic countries can apply for asylum because I am finding that Mr. Sundergaard fears persecution should he return. Mm -hmm. So I think in the back of that judge's mind, and and excuse me if I'm speculating, but I think I'm making a very educated guess. I think in the back of that judge's mind, he didn't want to set a precedent that would allow other individuals to apply for asylum, other persecuted Christians, which we know that happens in many places of the world. I mean, we know that there's a burqa ban in Denmark. Yeah. We know that there's and, um, circumcision of, of babies in Denmark. Now there's a ban against Deliverances? Yeah. And, you know, how far are we going to take this? You know, and, and when, I, when I shared, when I was asked to testify about religious persecution, say in, in Finland, you've got someone that was a parliamentary leader, that was the head of a party, physician, mother, grandmother, respected political leader. Uh, uh, what's the name? Pikey Rice. And I'm, I'm probably getting the name slightly wrong. I had it in front of me that day. But, but she's facing potentially six years in prison for three different times when she criticized the Lutheran Church, which is the state church, just like they have the state church of Denmark, and it's largely apostate, for the Lutheran Church saying that it was fine for homosexuals to, to marry, and she criticized that based on the Bible, she's facing potentially six years in jail for that. I, I mean, that's just another example of what's happening in some of these Scandinavian countries. So, Michelle, we've just got a couple of minutes here, and you're just giving us an overview of some of the injustice and some of the the wrongness of what's happened. Before we go any further, if folks want to stand with Torben, if they want to get more information, is the best website Friends of Torben, where should they go? Well, I know he has a Facebook site, which is his wife, his very supportive wife and confidant and rock, Lena Thundergaard, is posting. And also Friends of Torben and 
and they could just voice their support in their own in their own ways through their Instagram, through their their Reddit, through their own form of social media, because he has many supporters and many people who believe in him. And um, you know, I, I didn't know him before representing him, and and I'm not associated with the last Reformation, but. I am 100% his fan, his lawyer, his supporter, his friend, and I'm going to fight this to the fullest extent of the law because the injustice, the injustice that, has, that has been committed here against him is just far too great to go unnoticed. Yeah, so friends, go to friendsoftorbin.com, and Michelle, what we'll do, and we'll, we'll send this to you as well, we'll pull out this last half hour of the show, just making an independent episode on YouTube, and this way people can freely share this. Hear Torben's words live from prison. Hear your words as as his immigration attorney here. And and let me say this once more to all my brothers and sisters listening. Don't dare say for a moment, well, Torben's controversial, so why should I care? I don't agree with everything on Torben. If this could happen to him with a simple gospel message on the streets, living out New Testament faith, it could happen to anybody. If it could happen to him here in America under these asylum issues and immigration issues, and if he could be falsely accused, it could happen to anybody. So this is a brother we are standing with and someone who, very frankly, is ultimately in jail because of his Christian faith. Hey, we've got about a minute left. Anything more you'd like to share, Michelle? Well, I'd also like to share that we filed his appeal from this adverse decision and um, and again, I would like to stress that the adverse decision doesn't mean that that um, he gave false information. The adverse decision just means that the judge did not agree with issuing him asylum. And we have many strong points on appeal. We we hope to receive the transcript of all the proceedings very soon. And as soon as we receive it, we will be filing the brief within about a month of the receipt of that transcript. So in the next few months, we'll have more information ready for you, uh, Dr. Brown, and and we hope to to provide some good news regarding this very soon, God willing. Absolutely. Hey, Michelle, thank you so much for all your efforts and for, for being with us. And again, thank friends, you. You so go to friendsoftorben.com and let's pray. Torben, we're standing with you. Are you still listening? Let's pray Isaiah 54, 17 in Hebrew. It's a very specific legal application. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment meeting in in a court of law, you will pronounce guilty. So let us pray for justice. Let us pray for the furtherance of the gospel. Let us pray for personal encouragement that the Lord, the joy of the Lord would visit Torben and his family. And that next time we talk with Torben, it'll be outside of bars, freely living here in America. May Jesus be exalted through all this. Torben, we love you. We're standing with you. God bless. Hey, friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers, so subscribe today. Doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire, and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.